JJ's we see Frenson in the pits there now. A couple of things. Barrichello's greatest drive ever that I've seen him so far makes you wonder what would have happened if uh, Schumacher hasn't gone out the, in the first lap. But three DNFs, four in total, but three in a row. That could cost him a championship. Oh, without doubt. And it, it's such a shame because I think Schumacher would have taken the fight right to those two McLarens. Of course, he probably would have been on a different strategy than Barrichello anyway, and that's why... Uh, but Barrichello's driving fantastic. I mean, he did have a much lighter fuel load, which gives the car a lot more acceleration out of the corners, obviously, but he just utilised it beautifully. Do you think they did that because he was so far back on the grid to give him a chance to get through some traffic? Absolutely, yeah, without a doubt. Well, it's just wonderful. We've seen more overtaking in this race than we've seen all season. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? <laughs> No doubt about it. Well, as you can see, it's a fantastic race circuit, this, and uh, the Jordan people must be really happy. I mean, they've had a miserable season so far, two cars running so high up the order. The Arrows are going super fast. Well, obviously, like the Bennett and the Arrows, a car that enjoys low downforce, and um, obviously when you get to the faster circuits where you don't have to have as much downforce on, they became very, very competitive. OK, well, let's take you back now to Murray Walker and Martin Brundle. and Jarno Trulli, there he is, the Italian in the Jordan, is back in third position as a result of the stop of Rubens Barrichello, who is in sixth place, and sandwiched between Trulli and, Fred and Barrichello are Pedro De La Rosa in the arrows, there he is, and behind De La Rosa is Heights Harold Frenson. Yes, and while you're away, Frentzen made his expected pit stop because of his lower fuel load at the beginning of the race. Remember, he started 17th, came through the field, had to pit at the end of lap 19, came out of the pits and just managed to stay ahead of Verstappen. So Frentzen rejoins in sixth after a stop and Barrichello rejoins in fifth after his stop. So now everybody is on a level playing field. They've all got to stop one more time this afternoon. Well, coming up for half distance, this is a magnificent tour de force demonstration by the two McLarens. They finished first and second in France with Coulthard ahead of Hakkinen. They finished first and second in Austria with Hakkinen in front of Coulthard. That was their fourth, first and second of the season in ten races. It looks as though this is going to be their fifth in eleven races. If it is, it will give them 16 world championship points and certainly give them their revenge over Ferrari for having lost ten world championship points in the Constructors' Contest as a result of the problem they had with the label that you saw Martin talking about earlier on in Austria. Yes, and Coulthard's going to be ruining that uh, difficult start as a BAR passes a Benetton down there, which must be... Let's see... Yeah, I'm just trying to work it out. Well, there's, there's Verstappen. There's Irvine behind him. There is Jacques Villeneuve. That is Ralph Schumacher. And look at this lot! with Alexander Wurz behind Zonta and Salo behind them. And Salo is in 13th place in the Sauber. Behind him is Deniz in the uh, Sauber and behind Deniz is Heidfeld. So it, the, the McLarens are streaking away, but it's look how close it is behind them. This is almost go-kart racing that they're so close. Now Jensen Button is right at the back of this queue having a terrible afternoon because he stalled on the line, started last. He's last but one at the moment and barely able to uh, keep the pace up at the back. Matsukani's chasing him, and he's, I see from the computer, he's missed a chicane at some point without penalty, Look. thankfully, and Barrichello has just done a new fastest lap of the race. Which has taken him to within eight seconds of Pedro De La Rosa. He's a massive 33 seconds behind Mika Hakkinen and David Coulthard, but remember, he has made his stop and they have not. So when they come in and stop and refuel and take on four new tyres and wheels, it's going to be pretty close. Hakkinen leads, Coulthard second, truly third, De La Rosa fourth, and Rubens Barrichello in fifth place, who was third, is closing up with news from James Allen. Well, Murray, I've just been working it all out now with the fuel loads here. Rubens Barrichello took on 50 kilos of fuel. I reckon he'll stop again about lap 33 for his second stop. Frenson about lap 34. In the meantime, we expect the two McLarens and Trulli to stop around about lap 27 to 30. So don't go anywhere, folks, because this next phase is going to be absolutely fascinating. It's clearly a McLaren race barring any mechanical misfortunes. The key question now is which McLaren? Exactly. Is it going to be David Coulthard who is ahead of Mika Hakkinen, who is the double world champion from 1999 and 98? There are no team orders in the McLaren team. 
because the team's attitude is let the best man win until one of them is so far ahead of the other that the other cannot possibly regain a position and then the chap who is leading is favoured. But that's a long way off yet as we look at Zonta in 11th place. Wurtz behind him in the blue Benetton. And behind Benetton, behind Wurtz is Mikasalo in the stadium. Sure, I just saw a big flash of lightning over those trees to the left there out of the commentary box, Murray. And sure, I saw we had a lot of lightning through the last three days, but uh, some black, black storm clouds out there. Whether they come this way or not, as you can see, the sun is still shining as the Saudi mechanics are preparing. Ralph Schumacher is in the pits too. Uh, in at the end of uh, lap 21. From so, 10th place. Uh, not a great afternoon for the Williams BMW team. No, it's the BMW engine's first Grand Prix appearance at Hockenheim for a very, very long time. The last time they were there was with the uh, Brabham of Nelson Piquet in the turbo days, and uh, they're getting back into Grand Prix racing. And this is the one of the circuits which is toughest of all on engines. They're on full throttle for over 60 seconds in the lap. Those mechanics are brave in the pit lane, no doubt about it. A car coming towards them at 120 kilometres per hour, 67 miles an hour. Imagine just sitting down there with an air gun in your hand and something's coming towards you the best part of 70 miles an hour. So Hakkinen leads by 1.7 seconds. Truly a further 22.9 seconds behind. Delarosa fourth, Barrichello fifth. Frentzen rounds out the top six, currently 47 seconds behind the uh, leader as Villeneuve dis defends his position there against Eddie Irvine. He's passed him somewhere in this lap. We're going to take a short break. position he's had to yield it to Ricardo Zonta now and the orange arrows mechanics attack the car yes he was in seventh when he came in the the fact that uh, he's so slow in the pit lane the other two passed him out on the racetrack so Verstappen was in a pretty solid seventh place and away he goes it seems like a relatively straightforward pit stop and uh, Louise what can he tell us Again, you've gone out of the race in a first corner incident. Talk us through it from your perspective. Yeah, basically quite easy. I was going uh, for turning in for the corner from, from the outside line to get a nice uh, exit for, for the long straight to make it a, a run at Coulthard. And then uh, I was bumped up from the back. What part do you think that the McLarens played in that incident? Not very much. I mean, basically, Casey Keller came from behind and he is the person to watch out for cars in front of him not to run them over. I mean limits to what you can do and you have to adapt to, to the circumstances and he clearly didn't do that uh, good enough. Bearing in mind the controversy that there's been between yourself and David over start manoeuvres, were you kind of expecting him to pull a move on you like he did? Listen, I'm out of the race not because of David, I'm out of the race for physical health and that's, that's it, what you can say about it. Thanks Michael. Yeah, I've, I've got to disagree slightly with Michael, I understand what he's saying but he took the line, he really closed Fisichella out. He, he went into Fisichella's face and Fisichella was unable to slow down. It was no better than 50-50 in my view, Mary. I don't know where you're at on that one. Well, it, I, 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 I agree with you. You know, I tend to stick up for Schumacher more than most people, but I'm with you on this occasion. And that's cost him another 10 points to the 30 he had already lost through failing to finish this year. And you're looking now at Rubens Barrichello back with Pedro de la Rosa in the arrows. He's caught and passed the arrows once already this year, this race, and he's, he's going to do so again to regain fourth places. But remember, in Austria, uh, de la Rosa lost a certain points position as the result of the breakage of an oil union which look, just cost a Mary, few pence. Look, we've got a, a strange guy on this walking down the side oh. of the racetrack in a raincoat on the grass and what on earth is he doing crossing the race track during the grand prix and uh, clearly either a bit too much beer there or he's hit his head on something because he's not being sensible at all i don't i've never seen this before I, have you ever seen it Matt? well I, i've seen it 